Hi guys, Xander here from East of Maine tonight. It's a beautiful Thursday evening, about uh, 20 degrees Celsius, about 70 degrees Fahrenheit for you American lads. Um, what we got behind me is an SS 424 skid steer splitter. This is a little bit smaller than the uh, than the great big skid steer splitter we built. Uh, we started making back in January. Um, the bigger machine, the SS 524, it's based off our 2228 model. Uh, works really good, big wide wedge on it. This is more for, for a guy that doesn't have a skid steer that's quite as heavy to be able to run that. So what this is, is their 1222 turned upside down. You can get a four way and a six way wedge for it. It's about 20 tons of force with a, uh, with a standard skid steer uh, that's 3000 PSI. So with this machine too, with this skid steer attachment, it's a little bit quicker than the 524. Uh, just because of the smaller cylinder, uh, it's kind of a sacrifice. So it's kind of a toss up whether you want more power of the SS 524 or the speed of the 424. We got some blocks here, some nastier pieces, some old dried up ash that we got. So it's pretty tough stuff to split. I, I know a lot of guys are gonna say, oh, well it's ash, it's not hard to split, but if you get something that grows out in the forest, you're gonna, you can split it with a hatchet. But if you get something that grows out in the, out in the open, like on a fence line or in the city, it's really, really tight stuff. So that's what we have here to show you. Uh, we'll show you what's going on with that. Uh, this uses a normal skid steer mount plate, like a standard skid steer mount. It just plugs in your auxiliary hydraulics. You don't need high flow for it. Uh, our Terex here, a TSV60, it's a 60 horsepower skid steer. Pretty standard stuff for most guys. Um, so it's a 20 gallon per minute pump on it. Uh, this should cycle in around uh, six and a half seconds, maybe around there, six seconds or so. If you do have a high flow machine, if you have a machine that has high flow, it's gonna be significantly quicker than this. Um, some of those high flow machines go right up to 45 GPM, so you're almost double the speed. Um, and again, this is on a wheeled machine too, it's not on a cracked machine, so there's a couple of those variables. Um, like I said, our skid steer is a TSB60, it's a Terex, uh, same as a 60 horse cat, 60 horse bobcat, uh, in that in that range. So it should give you a good idea of, uh, of how this all comes together. Uh, to do it out of high flow, you just have to have the, the quick couplers for it. And as long as you specify that when you order it, we can uh, we can do that for you. The other nice thing about these skid steer machines is that the wedge floats. So you can go up to a piece of wood and it actually it more or less self adjusts. So you can uh, you can adjust the wedge and set it where you want it easily. Um, where a lot of them will be like a fixed wedge, so you're kind of stuck with where you set it is where you have it. So. It's just a little nicer setup. And you can see the beam on this is the same as our other beams. The same as our 1222 beam, the same as our 2228 beam. It's a one inch thick, eight inch eye beam. So it's, this is as heavy of a beam as you're gonna find on any log splitter. Uh, if you have a bunch of savages, if you have a bunch of animals that work with you, which a lot of guys do, I, I, can, uh, I can honestly attest that I, I may have a wee touch of that in myself, so. Um, if you have guys that are hard on equipment, this is, the, this is a skid steer splitter to buy because they, they can beat it, they can bang it, it's not, they're not going to hurt it. Um, so that's one thing to consider when looking at these things too, especially especially on a machine driven um, uh, attachment like this or machine driven splitter. Like if you have a, a normal splitter, you're running it by hand, right? So you're, you're able to manipulate it turn the block and read the wood, do all that kind of stuff. Where when you're sitting on the cab of that skid steer, you don't have a choice. You have to have an attachment, a machine that's heavy enough to actually take that abuse because you don't, you don't have a choice when you're in the cab. You can manipulate it a wee bit, move stuff around, but you really have to have something that's really strong, really rugged, that's gonna work for you in this particular application. Uh, we're gonna block up some wood. Like I said, it's, uh, it's probably around uh, 5.30, 6 o'clock at night. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to get all this video done in one night or if we're gonna have to go back at it tomorrow uh, this is finally when we've kind of got some time to uh the phones calm down we bitch which thank you very much guys like i've uh uh you guys have been great all the customers all the phone calls we get like i, I love it. it it's great to hear from everybody and everybody's different stories and how they're how they're set up doing things um but we're gonna try and get some wood blocked up we'll get you a video doing that i got a new saw it's a 562 husky um I decided to get a little bit smaller saw this time uh, just because I already have a bigger saw, I have a 372 which you take the rakers down early. It's, uh, I've heard a lot of good things about these 562s. 
I'm not uh, I'm not brand biased at all. Um, honestly, when we were in the bus show with Dad, uh, with Ian Ass Logging, we ran stills. We had really good luck with stills. They performed really, really well. You could throw them back in the truck and bang them. Uh, the Husky, my 372, has been quite as good as that, but it's been pretty reliable for me. So uh, I got another 562. Anthony Timmerman's a local guy that, that I bought it off of. Anthony's really knowledgeable, really good guy to work with. Uh, another guy local is uh, Pete Slana Marion. He's good for the Huskies and Echoes. Um, but I figured I'd just, I'd just give this a try and see how this saw works out. I don't need a bigger saw just because I, I kind of wanted something I could go into the bush with and clear trails out and uh, just for hunting and outdoor stuff. So that was kind of the plan with that. Um, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna get some of this wood blocked up here. We'll show you what we've got. Uh, we'll show you the machine running the saw around. We'll try and do a time lapse to kind of show you uh, exactly what kind of time frame you'd be looking at and running one of these. Uh, and we'll go from there. Any questions, please ask guys. Hi guys, we're back out here today. Um, we're gonna try out this SS 424 log splitter on the skid steer. We're gonna be doing boiler wood here. Uh, we're gonna be doing it for outdoor boilers, so we don't really care if it's terribly small or perfect size, but 
we're gonna give you a good idea of what to expect when you buy one of these. Uh, these skid steer spiders are fantastic for moving wood. They're fantastic for busting up big blocks and moving stuff around. So this should give you a really good idea of what to expect when uh, when you buy one of these. We're trying to get a bunch of different angles on it. Uh, we have probably a full cord of wood there. Not quite sure how long it's gonna take us to do it, but I'll uh, I'll check my phone here and see what time it. Uh, well, I'll check it right now. Actually, we'll see what time it is right now. It is 11.34 right now. So, it's 11.34. We're going to uh, see how long it takes to do it. Like I said, there's probably a... Well, it might even be more than a full cord there. I'm not quite sure. You maybe see it there. Um, but we're going to see how long it takes to do it anyways. Um, like I said, it's all going to be boiler wood. We're probably not going to be re a whole lot of it. Um, but again, should give you a really good idea of what you're getting into anyways. If you have any questions, please ask.